record. Yeah, yeah. 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 Every second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us continue to pray for Christians in Iraq and Syria and Nigeria and other countries who are persecuted and killed. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, seek the wisdom, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, this morning we have a, a big meal. You have to study memory and a uh, word about estimative. So, memory. Well, the importance of memory, we spoke about that at our class. class huh? It is uh, necessary for the survival of uh, living sentient man and even for animal huh? memory. And it is also necessary for man to build his personality. We build our personality our habits, all those things make, which make each one different from another huh? because we have memory. So let us go to number two, the function of memory. Well, we saw imagination was to store images and to combine them in a new way, huh? Fic fiction. Huh? But memory is, um, is taking our, those images and sending them to their origin, to their starting point. For example, I saw the dog of my uncle when I was five years old. He was named was Poppy. <coughs> so when I see, I see him, I see my uncle, I see myself in that place at that time, that is memory. When we situate an image in the time, in the past, of course, we cannot say it was the 5th of December, 1940, huh? but we can say it was when I was about, and we can situate that that is memory. So the difference between imagination and memory, it is to know the past as past. Uh, we can know the past, but we know the past as past. And when we know, we are conscious that that is not, is not now present to us. It is present in my mind, but it is attached to a, an experience of my past, huh? to a, a precise experience. Well, so it is to, to trace huh, the actual point of origin. And also make us distinguish the authentic image. That means memory allows us to distinguish between what is pure fiction in my mind, fantasy, and the reality of the past. And sometimes I can dream, I have an image, I transform my image, <coughs> huh? but when I go to the past, I have another image. I realize that what I think now is not exactly what I experienced when I was a kid. Huh? Okay, so the, in fact, you will see soon that the memory is very important to judge. We cannot judge without memory. For example, I would can say John is a good golfer. How can you say that if you have no memory of who is John and you have no memory what is to be a golfer? <laughs> so memory is necessary even to think, to judge. We cannot judge without a certain reference to the past. Uh, to John, the last time we met John, we know John, we saw John being a golfer. That is memory. Okay. Um, and because memory is just is linked with the past, the real past, the reality, uh, memory is linked with the reality. Memory is linked by the same good truth. In fact, what is truth? Truth is the conformity of my mind now to the reality, okay? So how I can do that for the past? Only through my memory. 
If I have no memory, I cannot attain the truth of the, of the facts. No? And that is the problem for, for the police, for the trial. If somebody is witness, uh, is witness uh, of an accident or a crime, <coughs> that is past. And when he speaks to the judge, he must not speak about the image transformed by his imagination. He must refer to the fact, to the reality. And if he, refer, he refers really to the reality, he is in the truth. Otherwise, he is not in the truth. It's the problem with children, for example. Uh, they, 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 can, they have an experience, they can talk about that experience, but sometimes their imagination can, can transform the experience. So we cannot make a judgment based on our imagination. We must base a judgment on our memory. So you see, memory is extremely important. We cannot think as a human being without memory. How can you say, for example, ice cream is good? <laughs> How can you say that now? Because you refer to a fact. The fact you eat ice cream, huh? and that fact corresponds now in what you see in your mind, what you think in your mind corresponds to the reality. And you are true when you, when you think now correspond to the experience you did in the past. So how can you attain the experience in the past if you don't have me more? And someone who loses, loses memory, he is not able to judge his own past. Cannot, because he has no relation with the past. So I mean, when you make an examination of conscience, what do you do? And you use your memory to judge the value of your action. If you lose the memory to what you did during the day, but you can't have an examination of conscience. Your dog, your cat, probably don't make an examination of conscience. <laughs> oh, because they are not intelligent, yeah, but they have a memory. We see that. Huh? OK. Uh, next page. <coughs> Remembering is a real activity hmm, of memory. Well, memory is nonetheless non, non an activity present to me in my consciousness. In fact, it is the presence of an absence. Isn't it? It's paradoxal to say that. Huh? Is this the presence of an absence? <laughs> that means I know what is present in my mind is not present in the reality, but was present in the past, in the reality. So memory is that. Huh? I am conscious that what I think about is not present. Because if we are <coughs> conscious that the past is present to you, it can be hallucination, it can be imagination, it can be <coughs> disease, but it's not, the, it's not memory. A memory makes the distinction between the present and the past. I make a difference because I am aware that what I think about, what I represent in my mind, that experience of my past, is past, is not here. Well, those who went uh, to uh, St. Clement last uh, two weeks ago, you remember St. Clement? Mm -hmm. Now I think more than most seminarian has a great devotion to St. Clement. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you judge the meal or the beautiful music the sister and brother Vietnamese, uh, they, they, they sang the beautiful. How we can say it was a beautiful music? How I can say that? Because I have memory. I have memory, but they are not seeing now. Huh? Nobody is seeing in the class. But I can say their song, music was beautiful. So I can say that because my memory make me aware of the absence of that music now, but refers me to two weeks ago in such a place that is the capacity for me to judge now that that music was beautiful. So we cannot judge anything, our experience, if we don't have memory. 
So you see the extreme importance of memory. Sometimes we despise memory. In our uh, modern education, we say memory oh, is not important. Memory is excessively important. Why? Because memory carries the facts we are judging, we are studying. Even your language is based on memory. When you see cat, for example, the word cat, the, the, if you want to meet, give a meaning to cat, you have, must have the memory of what is the meaning of cat. And that memory will refer you to an experience of the past. Of course, you don't analyze that every time you, you listen the word cat. But it is done in your mind at the speed of light. That means everything we listen to, if we want to understand that, we have to use our memory. Okay? Now, what is the formula? It is the past as past. Huh? The past as past. I go to number 4.3. Okay, but just before that, a fantasy comes from imagination, and memory can be affected by imagination. And that is the problem when you go to a trial, and the witness, you have a witness, you have to express exactly what happened, and maybe your imagination can modify unconsciously your memory. That, and, we may have, and your prejudices, your emotion, you know, etc. So, remembering is an act which oscillates between the past and the present. Huh? It is a link between the real and the unreal. Huh? It is a bridge between now and the past, the present and the past. I am linked with the past through memory. If I, there is no bridge, there is no past for me. It's the case of Alzheimer, huh? those who lose memory. I told you about my student, uh, and, in 10th grade, uh, who followed the Katerazu. Did I spoke to you about that? Yes. Huh? So he, he, he hurt his head, and he, when he stood up, he said, where I am? He did not know who he was. He lost his identity. <laughs> he no bridge between the present and his past. Okay? <laughs> so because of that, you cannot judge the past. We cannot judge what you did. Uh, remember, uh, seeks the, to rescue from oblivion, uh, forgetting the values, threads of past experience. Of course, we don't remember everything. We don't remember all the detail, but we, re we remember what is important for us, the meaning, uh, the values. And if, if you look at your memory, think about uh, when you were uh, at primary school. If I asked you to write on a paper, what are the events uh, you remember from your primary school, from grade one to grade six, for example? We will write only those who are very important. We keep in memory what is important. Happily, imagine if you keep in memory everything will not be able to think. <laughs> we will not be able to think because everything will be present to us. But we keep the most important for us, those who are a real value for us. Think about your mother and her kitchen, her cuisine. Huh? When you, rem you remember the meal your mother prepared, do, can you remember every, every, every dinner, every breakfast, every lunch? No. Someone or something, huh? for example, when I, my sister speak about my mother, it is the lemon pie. My mother was specialist in lemon pie and butterscotch. Mm -hmm. And we enjoyed that. She was so good for that. Of course, she was good for the rest also. She was able to cook beans and the potatoes. So we, we, we retain what is important, but what is the meaning, the value for us. Huh? Okay? Now, <laughs> the summary on page 12. It is exactly what we see. I, I remember remembrance huh? is the act actually occurred that actually occurred at some time in the past, but is no longer here huh, in prison. Nonetheless, it is present to my consciousness. Okay, and what is present in my consciousness is not totally in the past. 
That means, you know, the, the event is in the past, but it continues to have an influence now. The, the, <laughs> for example, the le lemon pie of my mother. They continue to have an influence on me. Why? Because I continue to think about that. And when I think about that, yum, 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 they were very good, you know? <laughs> Why? Because they, they are important. So the past is past, but they have an influence on us. It, it is so important. It is because the, the influence, the experience of the past have an influence of you that you can modify your way of acting. Suppose you prepare, uh, you prepare pies, and, and when you serve the pies, they are like concrete. Huh? You cook them too much. So next time you will cook pie, you remember that last time I let my pie too, too long in the oven. So now I will take less. You know, you modify, you perfection, you progress, because you can keep in memory your own experience. So the past, even if it is past, continue to have an influence on your actual life. Bon. It's true for religious, huh? yeah. you make a perpetual vows. That is past. We continue <laughs> to influence you. Or uh, your master of novices or your spiritual director told, that some, told, told, some new, uh, told you some good advice uh, 10 years ago, five years ago. And because you think about that, I continue to help you. you know? So the past is past, but because it is also present in my mind, it, can, it has a great importance. It can modify my life. Huh? It can help me to progress. But I must reflect on that. Of course, the past experience can help you to progress only if you reflect on that. If you do continually the same stupidity, and you never reflect on that, you cannot progress. Uh, a musician will progress when he realizes that at, the pa at passages, that passage is make mistake, you have to practice to practice, you know? Okay? Now, another thing, the material object of uh, memory is every, everything in the past. All my past experiences. And we have a lot of experiences we never have the capacity to remember. But the formal, it is those we remember as past. Well, uh, about 25 years ago, one of the first act of terrorism uh, from Palestinians, they uh, hijacked a, a plane from El Al. And in the plane, there was uh, Israeli and they were, uh, they were uh, uh, foreigners. And they landed in NTB, Uganda. And what happened? They, they freed, they liberated all the foreigners, but they kept the Israeli in the airport of NTB, capital of Uganda. So the Israeli knew that was a, a, there was in the plane a doctor in Paris, a French doctor. So they called him. They said, Do you accept we anarchize you? He said yes. So they took a special plane, they went directly to Paris, and they hypnotized him, and they obtained from him a lot of information. He was not aware he was processing that. Because when you, you, you have a lot of sensation enter you, when he was the, in the airport with the terrorists, he saw many, many things. And they asked him, for example, is that door open or not? Is that door blocked by? So he answered, because of him, they were able to liberate the Israeli. What is the proof of that? The proof is we, have a, we receive a lot of experience. We possess in our unconscious a lot of uh, data through experiences. But we are not aware of that. We are aware only a few one and the most important. The most important. And that is... I will say it's a good thing. Uh, we see that if you, uh, after forgetting is a good thing. So, but not forget your wallet, <laughs> forget your identity. But for, we cannot retain everything. Huh? 
So, but we retain those who are important, and we retain those, we keep them in our mind as past. Okay? And because of that, as a human being, we, uh, memory is linked with time. Because the past for us is in time. Huh? When you say, uh, 10 years ago, I mean, that is time. So the memory is, uh, uh, is linked with the time. And what is time? Uh, it is a succession of events, a succession of experiences, a succession of seconds, hours, minutes. What measure, what does measure minutes, seconds? What is our way to measure time for us? Your watch. Use your watch, no? But the watch is measured by what? What decide that watch, what function? Well, the, uh, the, the side, see, there in time, side there in time, no? the, the star, the, the sun, the moon, all that is measuring our time. So we are in the measure. What is time is the measure of movement. No? Time is a measure of motion or movement. according to before and after. That means we measure the motion from the before to the after. Uh, before Jesus Christ, after Jesus Christ. Huh? Before I was born, after. Before I was at primary school, before I was in kindergarten, after. You know? and, and we use date for that. Huh? That is the measure. Well, if we say measure, we say mine. Can your cat measure at the notion of time? Did you see ever your cat consult the clock? <laughs> <laughs> huh? No, because they have. But we have intelligence. That means our memory is linked with our intelligence. Huh? Our intelligence. Okay? And time is measured. But there is also a time that is not measured. It is a real time. In that real time, we call the duration. If we have a, a class on philosophy of nature, we will study time. St. Augustine uh, is a specialist of the study of time. A time huh? So duration. Duration is the lived time. And the time you live. Huh? The lived time. Well, you go to the dentist. Is five minutes in, uh, in, at the dentist's office the same duration as five minutes when you play soccer or you watch a movie? Yes, but it doesn't feel like it. Is the same duration? No. The same time? Yes, it is the same time. Five minutes at the dentist. Five minutes at soccer or a movie, a sport, is the same. But the duration is not the same. You, have, you experience that in your life many times, huh? You, you say, oh, that passed so fit. I have the, I have the impression that <coughs> lasts five minutes. In fact, that lasts one hour or 15 minutes, you know? It was so short. I will have to stay there, continue. I like that music. Oh, it was beautiful. That is duration. Uh, duration. So it is the, the and, you, and through duration, we can realize that we exist. In fact, it is through, uh, through our experience, uh, memory, in time and in duration, that we, we acquire our identity. I acquire my identity because I have the memory of the, my past and my present. I am conscious that I was in that circumstance. I am conscious that I, wa I am now. Hmm? I can measure the time, but I can also affirm that I endure since my first communion up to my ordination. <laughs> so that is experience we have only because we have memory. Huh? And that is very important. Huh? The self-identity, my own identity, is assured by my memory. 
it is the, the big problem of the person who love, lose their memory. I gave you a text on that. I hope you read that. Huh? And I, there is, I saw a movie about that in, in France. It was uh, a man in Angers, west of France. He was tortured by the Nazis during the war. He lost memory. But he, 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 he was able to sing opera perfectly. But he was not able to recognize his wife and his mother. You know? He was disconnected from his own past. Like my, my student, when he fell, he fell on the floor, he lost his memory of, of himself, but he continued to look perfectly Latin and mathematical. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Okay. So some, someone, they have accident, huh? and then they, they lose a part of their... I have a teacher, he had an accident the 21st of June, or no, the 5th or 7th, or the beginning of June, a car accident. There were four in the car. He lost completely, he has no, no injury, but he, he lost completely memory. And he woke up uh, on St. Town Feast, 26th of July. He told us, I have absolutely not a single remembrance of what happened between uh, the beginning of the, uh, the, the 4th of July and June up to the 26th of July. Nothing. It is completely deleted, like in your computer. <laughs> deleted. Yes, brother. I was just going to ask, when you say perfectly, do you mean he was better at Latin while he was... No, no, he was, he, 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 in he fact, was he, was, he, he was, was a good, he was the first of the class. He was very good in Latin. Okay. He lost, he did not know he was uh, Debre, his name was Debre, but he know about Cicero and uh, Julius Caesar, you know. Okay. Yeah? But he was just as good as he was before, he wasn't even better. Than no, no, he was the same. Okay. But he, what I want to say, he was disconnected, not from... Our thing outside of him, like Latin or English or uh, mathematics, he was disconnected with himself. Okay. But this is what happens when you sleep. When you sleep, you are disconnected. <laughs> you are not aware. In fact, we, are, we use our memory when we are aware, when we are awakened, when we are conscious. Is the proof that our memory works with our intelligence. We distinguish memory from intelligence, but they go together. They go together. In fact, in learning, uh, we cannot learn without memory. It is a myth. It has a big error of modern education to think we can teach children without using memory. For me, it's a myth. Because our ideas are carried by concept, by words. And those words must be learned and kept in memory. Sometimes you want to say, oh, I want to say that, but I don't have the word. No. You cannot express your thought if you don't have the memory of the word. Okay. So next page on the meaning of all my experience. That paragraph is very important. I will read it with you. Huh? While the imaginative power retains all experiences, it is the memorative power that conserves the meanings. Huh? The meaning. Imagination keeps the, the phantasm, the image, but the meaning of the image, huh? the situation in time, that is your memory. Because memory alone enables the individual, that is very important, huh? to relate them to their original source. Huh? The, therefore, thereby grounding our contact with the real. That is the foundation for us of the capacity we have to attain the truth. So when you attain the truth, it's not only function of my mind, it's function also of my memory. Mm -hmm. um, I go now to number eight. So memory provides a criterion to distinguish the reality of images. In fact, it is because I have memory that I can have judgment. I can uh, produce judgment because I am intelligent, of course. But my intelligence works with a subject and an object put together. And that subject and that object is carried by my memory. Uh, by my memory. In my memory, 
makes me in contact with the reality. And that reality can be very far, very far in the past. Think about your first communion. What happened in your first communion? How we can be related to the real fact of your first communion? How you can say, yes, really, indeed, I have received the Holy Eucharist. I, I, why you can say that? Because you have memory. Why you can say to the judge, indeed, I saw that man killing that woman. How we can say that? Because you have memory. Sometimes I think that we, we despise too much memory. You know, we should cultivate memory. And uh, it is lacking in our education now. We don't learn mathematics uh, by a, a table of multiplication. No? We don't learn uh, a lot of... No, the child must learn by himself, by play, huh? with fun. Of course, memory is requiring effort. Effort. And that keep you awakened. I know um, two brothers. One was, uh, he was a poet. But every day he learned at least from 10 to 20 verses by heart. Another brother, he was at the time, I know him, he was about 78. He was a former missionary in 1903. In, uh, he founded the mission of uh, St. Mary in, uh, in Montana. And that brother, he told me every, to keep his mind uh, functioning, he made one hour of translation from French to English and one hour from English to French. And he lived, he, he died about 95. He, he was so in good shape, he planted 35,000 trees. He, he rebuilt a whole forest by himself. He kept his memory functioning, you know. He play, today we play uh, Sudoku, we play crossword, Scrabble, it's good. You play logic. Hmm? <laughs> okay, so the, it, uh, <coughs> because it's very important huh, to, to separate what is the part of history and what is the part of fiction. It is exactly what you do when you study exegesis in the Bible. When you study Bible, you have to to distinguish what is the part of history, what is the part of fiction. It is true for any kind of uh, study, uh, epics, uh, when you study epics. Uh, we have to distinguish what is the part of history and what is the part of, uh, of, uh, okay, of reality. Now, 16, page 16, we already spoke about that. Huh? I say sensory is memory is the power of self identity. That I think I it is if I'm not convinced, but you tell me that after the class. We continue to discuss. <laughs> but we cannot know yourself without memory. And um, I, so my personality huh, is built with my experience of the past. But not every experience. With the experience I remember, the experience I reflect on. We have a lot of experience. Since you are, uh, since you are able to use a spoon to eat, and your mother was so happy the day you were able to use a spoon, because she was not able or obliged to give you <laughs> to eat. Huh? From that, you have a lot of experience of holding a spoon, no? But do you remember all that? No. But maybe a day your mother told you, no, don't hold the spoon like that. No, hold that like that. Ah, you reflect on that, and now you continue to eat, not like that, like a shovel, mm -hmm. but like a, a, according to the, the law of etiquette, you know. So that many, many, we have a lot of experiences, but we are built by the experiences we reflect on. So the extreme importance of examination of conscience to reflect on. For example, you write a paper, <coughs> and the teacher underlines in red some passages. She says, that, that, that is not good English. That is not good English. You have to improve that. But you take that, you put that. <laughs> Will you progress? You progress if you reflect, why did I make a, oh, I forgot. 
one boy, two boys. I have to put an S. You know, <laughs> you ref after that you will see, I have to put an S for the plural. If you never reflect, that is the, some, I am a teacher uh, for a long time, what is discouraging, you spend hours to correct the paper of your student, you give them, <laughs> finish. <laughs> or in front of you, they crush that. Oh, that is. <laughs> we want to help them, but they don't want to reflect on their experience. Because when you receive a copy with red, it is to improve. Huh? To improve. If you don't improve, you will do the same mistake after. So memory keeps the most important thing in my life, the meaning of my life. If I reflect on that, I can progress. When I reflect on my experiences, I build, I build my own personality. My personality is built with habit. And those habits, they are not given by nature, they are acquired by you. For example, the habit of politeness, of, of hygiene, they have the habit of speaking well, the habit of respecting nature, etc. All those habits. Even if your mother then do that, do that, you cannot do that if you don't accept yourself to do that. And after you reflect on that and you progress. It's, you know, sometimes we say that personality, a personality is not based by other because, oh, you are so, oh. no, the personality is not based by glamour, by approbation, or personality is, by, is, is, is built by yourself. And you build your personality when you reflect on your own experience of the past. Think about that. Huh? Think about that. Okay? It is true for spiritual life. It is true for mathematics. It is true for uh, study. It is true for playing the piano, cooking. Every habit we acquire are based on experiences on which we reflect. If there is no reflection, your experience has no value. It is true if you teach physics, for example, huh? chemistry, maybe I told that to you. I remember a day I was teaching uh, chemistry in a class, and by accident I put sodium in the water. Normally, when we put sodium in the water, it's like a skating. Huh? It's funny, it's, it's very funny. But I put, and suddenly, <coughs> everything, and it was stuck in the, uh, on the ceiling. Happily, I did not have my, uh, my face on that. Huh? But, but the reason, the, if they don't reflect why that happened, why that the, the sodium is skating on the water, why? They will not, you see, oh, it's funny, and the color, it was blue, it is yellow, it was red, it is pink. That, no sense. The experience, experimentation in physics, in chemistry, huh, are valuable if you reflect on, you, you have the experience, and after, so in the past, after you reflect on that, you can reflect because you have memory. But your memory will be useful to you if you reflect on that. Okay? Amnesia, I speak about that. So, go to page uh, 17, um, 9.3. So I already spoke about that. Memory is truly constitutive of personal history. In fact, memory as a power of unifying. That is important. Unifying your experiences. Memory allows you to be united to all the experiences you did in the past. All your activity, all your action. You can say, I did that. Oh, I did wrong. I did well, you know. The experience of remorse is there. So memory is a factor of unity and a factor of continuity. So memory allows you to be one. I, we don't say, uh, the little boy who received the communion, uh, the, the adolescent who graduated. No, we say I, I, I. Why you can say I? Because your memory is unifying all your experience. And because you are unified by uh, that, you can say I. Huh? So that is very, very important. No? Memory gathers the events of a lifetime into a unity. So you speak with a man who's 70 years like I am, huh? 
And I can speak about even in my life when I was six, I was four, I was five. And it is mine. I remember the day I have a teddy bear. Oh, I love my teddy bear. It was a more than known thing I have. A teddy bear. He was so he was he was almost not existing, but I was and suddenly a day my teddy bear disappeared. No more teddy bear. Probably my mother threw that in the garbage. Huh? And I realized that I was no more a kid. Huh? No, I have to live without my teddy bear. But I remember that clearly. Clearly, clearly, I can see the bomb was there. I was searching for my teddy bear. My teddy bear disappeared. Huh? It is the same thing in the life of Saint Teresa or Lisieux. You have exactly the same thing and same experience. The day at Christmas, she, she, she went up the, the, the stair and she did not see Christmas, uh, you know, stuck on. Yeah. It is no more. Now, no, you, no, the father said, no, you are no more a girl now. Yeah. Finish. You are no longer a baby. <laughs> well, that experience is for your whole life. And when I will be 85, if I continue to live, I will think about that. Okay? In fact, to be a teacher, to be a preacher, to be a doctor, to be a scientist, to be a pilot, a 70, uh, 747, or any kind of train, you must have a good memory. <laughs> Good memory. Imagine, I saw uh, the day I entered, the, I saw the, end, the, the, the cabin of a pilot. Incredible push. Huh? And a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of buttons. It's important not to touch the wrong one. Huh? You know? He must have a good memory. And when he is landing now, he says, hey, wait a minute, I have to search in my book. Uh, page, no. He must have memory. Memory is excessively important. I, say, I insist on that. Huh? I insist on that, memory. When you teach, continually I refer to my memory. I teach physics, I refer to my memory. I teach uh, philosophy, I refer to my memory. You teach literature, you refer to your memory. So if you don't have acquired a lot of uh, notion, data, in your memory, how you can use that? So the extremely important, what you are doing now in here, in, in, in college, excessively, you are acquiring, you are capitalizing, you are putting in your mind the data you will use in a few years. Maybe in 10 years, in 20 years, you will say, ah, Father Lego said that. So you will use it for your class <laughs> or for the conversation. Yes, it's true. I do that for my, I can see sometimes when I speak, I think about the teacher who said that. That is memory. <laughs> huh? Memory, okay? Um, so the function of retaining is, uh, is in the conserving is the, the imagination, but memory retain thing even, not separately, but uni unified, you together. Huh? I can say before and after. Before I was 10 years old, before I went to high school, and after when I went to. So, on, uh, on, on the contrary, memory is unifying our experience. And because that allows us to have a unified personality. I am one. But this, the disease not to be one, it is schizophrenia. Huh? Schizophrenia, 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 see? Schizophrenia. They, are, they have two personalities. We have a case in Montreal, six personalities. And there is a movie on that. And they film the six personalities. Usually it is two personalities. I live with a schizophrenia. I know it is very difficult because it is two. And one, the personality A does something, the personality B ignores what A did. For, for example, a person can, can be very furious, destroy everything in the kitchen. And suddenly, that person becomes like a lamb, and she, she asks, what happened? They have two personalities. The personality is not unified. What unifies your personality? It is your memory. Okay? Um, memory number 10. Uh, makes a man 
an enduring subject with the past. In fact, make a man I. I am continually existing. I endure. <laughs> I endure because of my memory. Of course, because I have a soul. But my soul used my memory to be aware of my continual con same personality. I was, a bit, I was in the first grade, I was in the fifth grade, I was the first communion, I was at my ordination, I am the same. Even accident change, that is memory. Huh? And because of that, I can have responsibility for my action. That explains the phenomenon, for example, of remorse. You have some gangsters, some criminals, after 30 years, they go to the police and they say, I did that. And they prove they did that. Why they come? Because they have memory. They have the memory uh, of what happened, and because of that, they can take oh, today the decision to go to the police and, they, and to say that man is not is not the criminal, I am the criminal. Yeah. Okay. So uh, number 10.2, only men can be aware of that uh, uh, subject, of course, because we must be intelligent. So memory works with intelligence. Uh, no judging, no judgment without memory. So we cannot separate them. Of course, we can distinguish them. And when you study logic, uh, we, we study simple apprehension, judgment, reasoning. We will not speak about memory. But, but, but even if we don't speak about memory, we cannot judge without memory. Okay. Um, so animals are creatures of the present. You know, they, they live in the present. I saw recently a, a movie about a dog in Italy. The dog, every morning, he goes to the mass, I uh, did the mass at 7.30, 8 in the morning. Every morning, the dog enters the church and kneel down and stay there during the mass. Every morning. He continued. Why? Because his master, huh, the woman who were her ma his master, died. And now he continued to come at mass. We saw that in this film. And the same phenomenon in Japan, a, a scientist, a, a scientist um, died, and every morning during ten, many, many years, the dog accompanied him to the train. And at, at, uh, at night, about six, seven, the dog came to the station to search for his master. The master died, he continued for about ten years, going to the station, and wait, and after that, at night, going to the station, waiting, after that, going back home without his master. The dog live in the present. But they have memory. But they cannot by themselves refer to the past. They refer to the past when there is something provoking them. For example, a dog can, when my dog Noni uh, saw me with my newspaper, mm, he remember what was coming. Huh? He will suffer through his ear. Huh? So that but if there is no newspaper, there is no, uh, is not frightened, huh? okay? So page 19, um, exercising and developing human memory. Education of memory. Memory is a power. Memory is an intellectual muscle. So if you don't exercise your muscle, they will become flat. <laughs> if you don't exercise your memory, your memory will die, huh? will be sclerosed, will be paralyzed. Huh? That is very important. Huh? Um, and it is clear without conscious entire effort, huh, we cannot retain the past. So we must make an effort. You know, when you write, you have at least, at least to press a little bit on your pencil. No? When you write, do you push on your pencil? Mm -hmm. You say, oh, pencil, write. No, your pencil needs to be, you, may, you must make an effort. It is the same for memory. If you want to memorize, you have to make an effort. And to make an effort of memory, it is to concentrate. There is no memorization without concentration. Is the reason why I don't believe you can learn 
and memorize very clearly, very effectively if you have plugged with music in your ear. We can do two things when we drive, of course. I can say my rosary or listen to music when I drive. And when you study the concept of philosophy, you cannot uh, write that in your memory if you are divided by other things. Huh? Concentration, attention, you saw that recently. Attention is a condition to learning. Attention, concentration is a condition to memory. We cannot memorize without a minimum of quietness, the tranquility. It is necessary to be on that. I remember when I prepared my master, not my master, my, uh, yes, my license in philosophy. We have to pass, we have 60 questions, 60 dissertations to prepare. Of course, as a, a good student, I prepare only 30. So I was sure at least one would be. But it was during summer, beautiful summer. And my office was just on the floor, on the, on the level of the garden, and the people were there. Uh, they were, and I have to prepare my exam. So what I did, I closed my windows, I put my uh, curtains, I locked my door, I concentrate. Otherwise, I will not be able, well, because all the time you have hmm, distraction. No memorization without concentration. It's not the number of repetition, it is important. It is the value of what you want to understand and to be attentive to what you are learning. You can learn something very rapidly if you concentrate and understand that, and you can't repeat that 35 times and you don't. If you don't understand, you have not concentrated, it will not stay in your mind. So don't forget, memory is ascetism. Memory requires a renouncement to fun, to distraction, <laughs> to games. <laughs> it, it is the price. You cannot concentrate on philosophy if you watch uh, The Simpsons. Hmm? You have to make a choice. The Simpson, the philosophy of The Simpson, or the philosophy of Aristotle. <laughs> okay. Um, so, there now a word on page 20 about a reminiscence. Well, reminiscence is the recall to mind of a long forgotten experience or fact. Miriam Webster. That means you, you know that you know, but you are not able to know what you know. <laughs> I mean, that person, you say, I know that person, I know her name, I know his name. But now, I, I know that I don't know, that is forgetting. And reminiscence is provoked when I am aware of forgetting. Uh, you make an effort to remember, to uh, recall, when you are aware that you are forgetting. That means there must be something provoking your reminiscence. A question, for example. Or you see a person. Recently, I saw someone in person. And I know, I, I know, I met him. I was not able to see where and to put his name. After for a few minutes, after I say, okay, I know, but he was too late. <laughs> you know? So the reminiscence, huh? So um, I go just after that uh, in the middle of the square. Reminiscence is the activity of the memory enlightened by the intellect. Huh? That means it is my intellect wants to know, to know who is this person, to know what happened. And now you use your capacity of recall or reminiscence. You try to come back to the past. You make an effort for that. You use your intellect. You make association to find who is the person, what happened, etc. Okay? So uh, a reason, in fact, when you are searching for the past, not only you use your memory, you, you also use your reason. You use your reason. You can reason and ask questions to you. When do I do that? What happened? What is the link between the two events, etc.? Um, <clears throat> well, animals, they have a memory, they have that kind of reminiscence, but it is passive. That means they can recall, they can uh, only when they are provoked. 
by something, uh, by a noise, by a, a ring, a bell ringing. And uh, for example, an animal can associate uh, meal with bell. You ring the bell, and they come. Uh, he is associate, he is obedient to your voice, for example. Another will call him, maybe he will not move. You call him, he will move. You know? okay. um, so, Aristotle explained why there is a difference between the memory of animal and the memory of man. It is because we are intelligent. Our intelligence is overflowing. Uh, is not only in my mind, it is also in my own powers. My intelligence is guiding my imagination. My intelligence is enlightening my memory. My intelligence, we'll see that in a few minutes, uh, is uh, preparing the future. So we cannot separate my body and my soul, my mind and my imagination, my intellect and my memory, they work together. That makes man able to use his past experience to progress. Huh? That is important. Now forgetting, I already spoke about that, now forgetting it is, a, is, this, is not ignorance. Forgetting it is to know that we don't know. <laughs> huh? And it is necessary. Forgetting is not a bad thing. Huh? Imagine uh, if you remember every sensation, every experience you had since 6, uh, 6.30 or 6 in the morning when you woke up, would you be able to listen to me? No. So we have to forget what you ate at breakfast. You have to forget the call you received yesterday to concentrate. So concentration implies necessary forgetting. <laughs> And forgetting is a good thing, but sometimes it's a bad thing. <laughs> when we need, <laughs> when we need, but it is necessary. Huh? If you want to think about everything at the same time, huh, you cannot attend anything, nothing. So a forgetting huh, is a equivalent to a partial remembering. Huh? Okay, now <laughs> well, you can. Uh, we go now to evaluative senses. <coughs> I will begin, if I don't have time, and continue the last class. Last class. So we have evaluative senses. <coughs> evaluative senses. Evaluate means, in fact, to judge, huh? to estimate, to judge. Well, uh, by analogy, because a uh, dog evaluates also. <laughs> huh? uh, uh, a lion evaluate, but it don't evaluate abstractly. So it, we call that also estimative. I pre evaluate the sense or estimative. And in the case of man, we call that cogitative. Why? Because man is evaluating, is estimating things with his cogito, with his intellect, huh? with his way of thinking. <coughs> Estimative is an internal sense using the, the, the phantasm uh, and using the memory huh, to prepare the future. It is necessary for survival. An animal cannot survive without that estimative power. That means an animal cannot survive if he does not use his past experience prepare the future. Okay? Of course, the first time, he has depend on what animal, because we see there are many levels of more animal. A spider, a bee, and a cat, and a dog, and a chimpanzee, they don't have the same, uh, the same level of capacity of evaluating. Huh? Is the reason why it is easier for a chimpanzee to, to get rid of a bad situation than a spider or a bee. You know? okay? So it is, yes, brother. Uh, I just want to, in, in estimative is uh, internal sense using phantasm to prepare for the future? Yes. Okay. Yes, we use our past experience, phantasm, yeah. imagination, yeah. memory, huh? a fact. Of me we use all that to prepare the future. Thank you, Father. Okay. My, my memory gives me 
what I did, what I did as good or bad, huh? and my imagination can use that to improve, you know, fantasy, huh? fiction. So it is necessary for survival and for well-being. <clears throat> so animals have to use their imagination to feed their children, huh? to feed their, their brood. They have, imagine, they have to use their sense uh, preparing the future. Self-defense, uh, for self-defense. Uh, natural needs, etc. Um, it is a practical appreciation. It is a practical appreciation. In fact, it is not abstract. Uh, it is practical appreciation. For animals. Uh. In fact, animals select the means. They have to select the way for example, uh, if a, a dog wants to, to, to pass over a ditch, um, he, has, he has to find the best way. He can jump, but sometimes he cannot jump. He has to, to pass over uh, either a bridge or a, or a piece of wood. Animals have to adapt. And they adapt to new circumstances because they have the capacity of evaluation, sense evaluation. Of course, it is based in their instinct. Huh? They are endowed with instinct. And the more they are detached from matter, the more they are able to use their instinct. A chimpanzee, because he has hands, he can do many things um, a, a bird cannot do, or uh, a snake. You know? okay. well, the function, yes, brother. How are you using the word appreciation? Appreciation. To appreciate. The need to evaluate, okay. huh? appreciation, evaluate. But if it's not evaluation, huh? okay. Uh, the fun what is the function of that sense is to uh, to assess, to affirm the value of thing experienced, huh? the value of thing. Huh? For example, if you give a dog uh, something to eat and he is sick after that, probably the next time he will be prudent. My dog, after having beaten once with my newspaper, he knows. I have to go to do well. I don't want to be. <laughs> huh? You have to adapt. It's funny. We have some more. I have some movie in my computer about birds. How they try to adapt to find to find something in the wood to to be able to eat. Okay. Uh, the object of the evaluative it is the experience of all my senses. In fact, all my senses can help me to evaluate the future. But the formal, not every experience is interesting for me. Only the experience which are useful and pleasant, huh? pleasant, uh, pleasant or desirable. Huh? Desirable because they are pleasant. And that confirmed what I told you before. We kept in memory, we keep in memory only what is meaningful. Huh? Is the same for animal. So when they need something, huh? something useful for them, or something is desirable. For example, uh, you are, I saw a circus in Ottawa when I was studying theology from Russia, USSR in the time, Soviet, a Soviet bear, big Soviet bear, on the bicycle. He was on the bicycle. But every time he passed in front of his uh, tamer, the tamer gave him something. Sugar, probably. And bear like sugar. Sweet. Huh? Don't be too sweet if you go in the forest. Huh? And he continued. Every time he passed, he gave, you know, he was, he continued to, uh, to bite because it was something. No sugar, finish. <laughs> you know? Animals, they are, they do, they preview the future, they do. Uh, if, if, my, I remember my grandmother at country. After the, the dinner at night, she took a, a big cup, a big plate of milk, a pot of milk. And when she went out, she said, let me do, let me do. And all the cats happened. They knew when she, she saw the it was something desirable, huh? something pleasant. That animal, it's an experience, you do that with your dog, with your cat. Huh? You know, they preview what will happen. Huh? 
because of experience of the past. They, they, they know. Huh? If, for example, our dog was, not, was uh, his place was to, to, to supervise the kitchen, and uh, we have a, a court, because you have a gangster everywhere in the world. Huh? And during the day, he was there, but he smelled. The kitchen was not far. So he knew exactly what was the time to approach, what the time to receive is, you know. He was preparing an animal when he's hunting, a, a, a lion, when he's running after a gazelle, it is not for sport. It is for eating, huh? for food, for him, uh, for his, his, his little. Huh? So the human, uh, the, the desirable, the value of the thing. Now, if I go to cogitative, it is, we call, a particular reason. Particular reason. What is it particular? Because normally, reason is universal. Hmm? Reason, when I say reasonable, my reason, concepts are universal. But now they are universal, but they are applied to a special circumstance. So they are particular reasons. We, we use that many, many times. We use our mind, but we use also our senses to preview the future, to organize the future. You prepare a, a cake, you prepare a dinner, and you prepare a banquet, but you use your, you use your, uh, your past experience, you use your reason, but you use also your cogitative. That means you apply your past experience, sense experience, you apply that to the future. And you see, that will taste like that. And you, you are cooking and you are sure that what you are preparing will taste like that. You know? So you are using your cogitative. That means you have an instinct. We have instinct, but you use our reason. We have, for example, instinct to eat, but we don't eat like we eat using our reason. We prepare our eating uh, the way we eat by using our reason. <coughs> and all actually are our biological important. Uh, for example, uh, uh, sexual uh, uh, activity, uh, it is a part of human reality, but it is always used our, through our reason. In fact, in every culture, sexuality is controlled by laws, uh, by laws, because of the consequences of that are so important, children. So it is, we can say we, have, we use our reason, but at the same time, we use our senses. I don't prepare my kitchen only to using my intellect. I prepare the meals using also my senses. And my memory of what I did last week or last year, preparing Thanksgiving. Huh? I did that last year. So you use your memory huh, of sense memory to prepare a good meal this year, a better meal. <laughs> huh? So intellect and instinct. In fact, instinct in man is not pure instinct. Because our, we have instinct. We have instinct. We cannot deny that we are animals. But our instincts are enlightened and leavened by our mind, huh? our intellect. So they are guided, huh? detached uh, by the intellect and the will. We have two faculties huh? which uh, uh, take our uh, instinct and raise them to a rational level. So my sexuality, my, uh, my desire to eat, my necessity to sleep, I use my intellect. I don't sleep like a cat. I sleep in the bed. Huh? I have an alarm clock. Right? And I will also influence the way I sleep. I organize my bed. I do, you know, we use our faculty to do, to prepare things. But those things we prepare answer biological need. So that, that means we have instinct, but our instinct must be guided by our intelligence. That corresponds to the definition of man by Aristotle. Man is a rational animal. We are animal. So we are instinct. But we are rational is the reason why it is cogitative. We apply our instinct, enlightened by our intellect, to concrete situation. We prepare the future. Okay? Um, so, um, 
the instinctive knowledge of the animal is enco encoded, but our knowledge of preparing the future is acquired. Is acquired. That means it is a habit. Huh? Uh, nobody among us can learn by itself how to cook. We cook because our mother or someone taught us, or we took a, a book. We, we use the knowledge of other to satisfy our instinct. Our instinct is to eat, huh? is to drink. But my intellect indicate me, uh, teaches me how to do that in a rational way. Huh? I don't drink in the river like a dog. I use a glass, you know. I use a fork. I can eat, but I use. You know? my, I, I put my intellect in my instinct. I rationalize my instinct, my sexuality, my gluttony, <laughs> huh? my need for sleep, for rest. All that is enlightened, transformed, humanized by my intellect. Okay. So, um, well, that is the most, the, the essential of what you can have in the second part about the, um, about the evaluative senses. So the, what we saw, we saw the internal senses. We saw the coordinating sense, common sense. We saw the, the role of the imagination. We saw the role, the importance of memory. And finally, we saw that knowledge acquired through experience, through sense, our knowledge can be used for the future. If that is cogitative for men, it is estimative for animals. Now, next week, we will pass, next class, we have one chapter to make the passage from sense knowledge to intellectual knowledge. I invite you to read chapter six, from sensation to intellection. It is very interesting, the story of Archimedes. Huh? Have a good a break. Thank <laughs> you.